Dear brothers and sisters, as we come very close to, to the month of Ramadan, um, we tend to have this, this thought and this conversation about, you know, have we prepared for Ramadan and, 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 and are we ready to start the month of Ramadan? And, you know, in the past few weeks, actually, especially in the last uh, uh, few days, I was asked this question a lot, which was, you know, are you prepared for Ramadan? Are you prepared to uh, start the month of Ramadan? And, and that really made me think of, you know, are we really uh, prepared to be in this, in this holy month of, of Ramadan? And a lot of times we tend to lose focus on the, uh, the important aspect of the month of Ramadan and we get busy with uh, the, the, the sunnah and the things that surround the month of Ramadan. We tend to, 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 to put a lot of emphasis on, on the sunnah that come uh, during the fasting, before the fasting and after the fasting and we don't tend to put a lot of emphasis on the fasting part of the month itself. The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to just abstain from eating and drinking. He said it's, it's really the, the, the mannerism, how we carry ourselves during that month is what counts. So that kind of had me thinking, can we refine that question of are we really prepared for Ramadan to are we prepared to fast the month of Ramadan? Are we really prepared to fast and conduct our fasting in a manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it from us? Because the key for fasting is as the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadan iman and wahtisaban min Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, believing and acting on the values of the month of Ramadan, all of their sins are forgiven. So the trick is to really fast the month and fast that period when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing for that fasting. So let's look at what should we be doing when we're fasting or what shouldn't, be we, what shouldn't we be doing when we fast. Now Muawiyah said, معروف زماننا منكر زمان قد مضى ومنكره معروف زمان قد بقية. He says, what we consider as good, what's acceptable in our society these days, what's normal action that we do in these days was frowned upon in previous generations. The previous generations would frown upon what we take as the norm these days. And he says, and what we frown upon today what we look at as bad habits, at bad mannerisms, the future generations, our children, will accept those things as the norm. And I'm sure we've all experienced this and we've all seen this when what maybe what our parents used to consider wrong, we consider acceptable. And what we consider wrong or what, what mannerism we don't accept, our children are not following through. So we're setting up our children for failure. The Prophet says, I was sent to fine tune those mannerisms so I can complete those mannerisms for you. So I can teach you how to live this life, how when you fast, you should truly fast the month of Ramadan and not just abstain from food and water. Because this is the key difference between fasting the month of Ramadan and doing it as a matter of a habit because this is what we were taught to do since we were kids and this is what we've been taught in books and, the, and doing it for seeking that forgiveness for all of the sins that we have done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Prophet sallam in Surah Al-Qalam verses 4, he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلْقٍ عَظِيمٍ you have this high status in this mannerism. He's addressing the Prophet ﷺ with these, you know, description that says you're very high in those mannerism. 
not only that those mannerisms will help us reach that level of fasting where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it from us, but there's a great reward for having those mannerisms. In an example in Surah Al Imran, verses 133 and 134, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa wa So in the first part, in this first ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, reach this forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reach this paradise that is so wide that was prepared for those righteous people. And then he follows to continue the description of those people and the description has those mannerisms or some of the mannerisms that we're going to be talking about. He says, He says, those who, send, who spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease and times of hardship. He says, well, kaadhameen al ghayda those who, 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 are, who are when forced or when put into situations that make them want to get angry, they withhold that anger. And he said, and those who forgive people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are nice to people. So you could imagine the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing for us, not only by accepting our fasting, but by having those great rewards for the destiny of paradise. And not only that, but keep in mind, we're also setting the standard for our children. We're teaching our children what's right and what's wrong. Because we are failing in preparing the future generations. We are failing in preparing the future generations. We are failing in preparing the mannerism for our children. Especially these generations, they don't like to listen. They like to see action. They don't want to read from a book. So if the parents and the uncles and the aunts are not practicing those mannerisms, how are they going to learn? This is where the disconnect is. We teach them that the fasting consists of with holding ourselves from eating and drinking for this period. And that's it. We get angry, we get upset. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِطَعَانٍ وَلَا لَعَانٍ وَلَا فَاحِشٍ وَلَا بَذِيءٍ He says, the believer does not curse does not talk about other people's bad behavior or, or talks about other people in a way that they don't like it. Does not curse at them. How many of us really follow this hadith or follow this advice or follow this mannerism in the month of Ramadan? I mean, how many of us curse in the month of Ramadan? Think about it. What example are you setting for your children? when you don't set the right example. We do not, we, when you don't practice those good values. How about just saying something nice to people? Just for the sake of saying something nice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَا in Surah Al-Baqarah verses 83, talk to people in a nice mannerism. Talk to people in a nice way, compliment people. When was the last time we really compliment our friends? Or complimented our, our, our siblings, or complimented our spouses, or complimented those who are around us? Isn't this what we should be doing to set the example for our children? When was the last time we complimented our children? When was the last time we complimented our parents, our spouses, our friends, our co-workers, just somebody you're dealing with. Why do we associate Islam with just the requirements and the things that we just know about the basics? Islam is much bigger than praying, 
and fasting and giving zakah and doing pilgrimage. This is how we really need to present Islam to people, by doing those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنَكُمْ or ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ He says we have to fix the relationships between us. We have to fix the broken links between ourselves. We have to fix the issues that we have among us. And how much of that are we doing? You have siblings not talking to each other for years. You have children and parents not talking to each other for years. For the smallest and most ridiculous reasons. How can we go in the month of Ramadan knowing that we haven't spoken to our parents and we haven't spoken to our uh, siblings or we haven't spoken to our children or our friends or our cousins in a long while? I mean, shouldn't those you know, uh, acts of worship get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't that the purpose of the month of Ramadan? To get us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As the Prophet sallam said, when the month of Ramadan starts, one of the things that happen is that, you know, the, the shayateen are chained. So at that time, the, the, the evil that we're trying to fight is our own evil. The evils of ourselves. The bad habits that we have. So how can we change this habit? How can we break this bad cycle of bad blood, as they say? He also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ishtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'd al-dhan ithm. We need to avoid thinking the worst of people. We need to avoid thinking something that we don't know for sure. And in a, lot of, in, in, in a lot of our cultures, that's something that we do a lot. We don't know facts. We don't know what happened, but we assume. Somebody comes to you and says, you've done this or that person did this, and we believe it. So think about those different mannerisms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Do not commit ghiba. And when we look at the definition, as the Prophet ﷺ defined it, he said, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَى Talking about your fellow brothers and sisters and something that they don't like. So one of the companions asked, he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what if what we're telling is the truth? What if what we're making or what we're saying is, is, is factual statement? He said, that is ghiba. And he said, but if you're not, if you're, if, if you're making something up, he said, that's even worse. Because now you're committing riba and you're lying. And how many of us commit this sin on a regular basis? How many of us continue doing this bad, sin, bad, uh, bad sins? How many of us fail in reaching the good standard for our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Those who are patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them reward without count. Now how many of us are going through hardships? How many of us are being tested right now? I know most of us, if not all of us in this masjid, are going through one type of trial or another, one type of a hardship or another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we just need to be patient. We need to set the example right for our children so they can see what it takes to deal through hardships. How we deal through hardships is something that we show our children because they observe everything that they see. They learn from our actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl verses 90, Inna Allah ya'muru bil-adli wal-ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to do justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be just 
when dealing with people. If someone comes to you with a problem, you have to be just. And I know we fail miserably in this situation. As a community, we fail miserably in trying to be just to people. Being truthful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa koonu maha sadiqeen in Surah Tawbah verses 119. He says, Oh those uh, who believe, be mindful of Allah and be with the believers. And there are plenty of ayat that talks about being with the believers and the reward for being with the believers. Are we setting the stage for our children to fail? Are we setting them up for failure? Humbleness, being kind, are also examples of changing our mannerisms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising the Prophet ﷺ in Surah Al-Amran verses 159. He says, He says, if you, if you were really mean to the people around you, they would leave you. So if the Prophet ﷺ is being advised to be kind to people around him, the same person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he said, You have this high level of mannerism is being advised to be kind to people. Where are we from the Prophet ﷺ and where are we from being kind to people? In Surah Al-Shu'ara verses 215, he says, min al-mu'minin." Humble yourself for those who followed you from the believers. How many of us really humble ourselves when it comes to dealing with people? A lot of times you are put in a, in a, in a situation where you are in a, in, a, in a high position. Whether this is humbling yourself to your children, humbling, humbling yourself to your siblings, to your spouses, to your parents, to your co-workers. Where are we from having that level of humbleness? Dear brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, you're setting the standard for your children. We are setting the standard for the people that look at us and deal with us outside of this community. Non-Muslims look at you and determine what Islam is. We can have a discussion with them, we can, we, we can give them Quran, we can give them all of these nice pamphlets, all these good things that describe Islam. But until you practice, until we, as a community, show them what those things are, it's nothing more than ink on paper. Our children are waiting to learn. We spend a lot of time and energy into making sure our, our children succeed academically. You look at our children and you see them in the top level academically. You look at any school and you look at the top students, you'll see a large number of them are Muslims. We do a great job with this. But where we fail with our children is when we leave that good mannerism part. When we don't teach them what mannerisms are. And a lot of times that happens because we don't know those mannerisms. We don't practice those mannerisms. We think that they'll pick that up later on in the future. Our kids turn 18 and 19 and we, we, we come to realize that they don't have any of those mannerisms that we've had. And this is where the disconnect comes. This is where Muawiyah said that what we frown upon now will be accepted by future generations. And what the previous generations frowned upon, we look at as being the norm. So if you want to have a plan for the month of Ramadan, if you want to prepare for yourself for Ramadan, when Ramadan starts, think about what mannerisms are you going to change during that fasting period? What manners are you going to adapt and start doing 
and which ones you're going to stop. If we need to start with just one. If we need to take one thing to change about ourselves, to set the example right for our children, let it be the first day of Ramadan and let that carry on after the month of Ramadan ends. Because what we're doing now is we're creating a bigger gap for our children to fail. We're telling them what is the standard. And what we teach our children is the standard is as long as you succeed, as long as you succeed academically, everything else doesn't matter. We put so much emphasis and I've heard this from so many parents. They tell their children, make sure you focus on your academics, on your homeworks, and then Islamic studies can come afterwards. If we tell our children this, then what do we expect our future generation is going to be?